Hello, I am David W. Parker. This is the program today I learned. This felt series, we're going to continue to build out our application. Today we're going to be building a nice little uh, settings form that allows us to update our username and display as well as request a password change link. Let's go ahead and do each of those in turn now. So first thing is, let's just show this app, app real quick. So we have our app here. Still log in. We have a new settings page up here. Displays out the display name as well as the tester or the username. Just tester here. We go ahead and in our local storage, you can see that those are displayed uh, from our application endpoint. And then if we update either or both of those, you can see it updates successfully. And then uh, here in our local storage, it also updates. We can also request a password change link, which uh, sends off the appropriate request to send off that uh, link. Um, we can take a look at that. Um, there a letter opener here. You can see we have a email. Someone has requested your change for test.com. So we will update this. This doesn't work yet on the because we'll be added at a later point, but we have both of those added for, uh, so let's go ahead and look at the update and see how it all works. So the first thing is we've added some new alerts. You can see they have this alert here. Um, and if I try to do an update, so I have the built-in stuff. So, um, but it also has the errors properly displayed out. So let's just go ahead and see what we got. So under our source here. Components. We have a new folder called alerts. We've added one for the errors. And I'm going to do a loop through here and check for each and display out what each error is with a little title. And then on the other side of things, if it's success, it's just going to be singular success at the moment. And with that little green check and a title and a success. So very simple. Um, little display for each of our alerts. We added a new submit button, as you can see here. This looks a little pretty, and we can sign out. We can see it's on the sign in and register pages as well. Let's take a look at that real quick. Some new things in Svelte, um, new to you, at least in this app, the uh, this series, but it's not new to Svelte. So we're going to pull in Create Event Dispatcher. So we haven't used this yet, but basically this allows us to um, basically make some kind of request or against this, and then it dispatches up our component tree, and somebody the one a component that has uh, owning this component is able to catch that uh, dispatch and then do something. So I'll show you exactly what that means in just a moment, but let's walk through it. So. We're going to have create uh, event dispatcher. We have a UI refresh. It's one of our new icons. So you can see when I click sub, uh, sign in here, we have a little spinner. Um, we have some default text here for the submitting and submitting text, whether or not we're going to be full width or not, some icon. Um, basically, just display out what the button looks like. And then we're going to say if it's disabled while it's submitting. So this should look familiar from the previous episodes with the sign-in. Uh, we just basically moved this into a common submit button. The main thing is we have this new on event click event handler, and it's going to go ahead and dispatch the event of submit. You can name this whatever you want, and this is what is really important. Um, so when we go to sign-in or any of the other pages that are using this new submit button, We say, um, submitting. oh, and these ones actually it's just uh, submit. So <laughs> funnily enough, this one won't actually need to do this because it's going to just dispatch the submit itself from the submit. Um, that being said, we'll get to another one that's a little, uh, a little more involved. But you can go ahead and say, blah here. And then in our submit button, 
here, we would say on blah and then handle. So that would be how you normally do it. But the main thing is here we already have this form that's gonna uh, take the submit for us. So that's the reason that actually works without it. So a little different. Um, so we'll continue on. We have this icon, this is the inset that we are using, uh, as you saw on the other page for the registration, what we had before, the little check marks here. We're doing the same kind of thing on the left-hand side this time uh, with the absolute and left zero. So you can see this is again relative. So it's very similar to the, uh, the form one, but for the button. For submitting, we're going to go ahead and submit some text and then have our refresh outline. And we can, otherwise, we're going to display uh, just this little button here. So we can go ahead and look at some of our new icons real quick. So we had the exclamation circle in green before. Now we have the lock, red X, and the refresh outline. The red X is used on the air one. The lock is used on the forms, but you could put it really whatever. And actually, these ones, this red X actually technically isn't red anymore. It's just a uh, certain height and width. And generally speaking, I like to use H6 and H uh, W6 on all of these. I think on these two I didn't, but the rest I have. And as I add more, I, I generally just give that as the default. And I try not to do the color, so that way you can pass the color down. Um, these are a little older uh, from my code, so I went ahead and just left them as was. The refresh is going to go ahead and be a little bit different. Um, we have a small little, we, we know it's an SVG. It's uh, also because it's within the, this uh, button, we're going to say five instead of uh, H6 and W6. And basically, it's going to take 1500 uh, milliseconds, so a second and a half to infinitely go and rotate around and around and around the entire 360 degrees. So, you know, as you just saw, it basically makes it an infinite pattern of spinning around and around and around of that little arrow thing. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the sign in of oh, the nav bar we did change as well. Let's take a look at that first because I noted that in here. The only real difference here is we added this new link if they're signed in to the settings page. Again, a lot of this is repeated. We will clean that up at another point, or I may just do it in the background sometime and make reference of that. And then the sign in and sign out page, as I already shown, we have the importing the submit button and we're going to use the UI lock. You don't have to use the icon there as I coded this previously. It's made it fully optional. Um, so then the submit button, uh, we know we want it full length. We're going to have it, the UI lock, and then is it submitting or not? The sign up is the exact same. So I don't really going to say any difference there. Finally, we have our settings page, which is all the new fun stuff, minus the dispatcher. So we are going to import go to and stores from Sapper. Like again, as I mentioned previously, try not to use as much Sapper because Falkit is coming around the corner and this changes a little bit. This makes more things you do later. Um, we're going to grab our user. We're going to go ahead and grab our APIs. These new alerts, we may just throw those in a common one, similar to how we did icons, but I haven't yet. And then our submit button. We're going to grab our display name, email, username from our user. And again, this is within the user object with, uh, that is brought back. So let's go ahead and sign in again. Let's go refresh so I don't have to type stuff. And you can see it's user and then user has the that information within it and then you have AUD as well as JWT present here. So that's why we're getting the user object within that. Uh, we have whether or not we are submitting 
Are you submitting the password or success message and error message? We have a little bit of styling for our class that will just be repeated. So as you recall, the page is just a store within the Sapper uh, stores. So we're going to get the query value of password. Um, this is just for our own case, in case we refresh the page. We don't actually really need this quite yet, but it's basically uh, whether or not we're going to be saying, hey, we submitted uh, yes or no, and whether or not things have been updated, yes or no. So updated as well as password. Something to note is I did not design this yet so that it works uh, as expected. So if you go ahead and refresh the settings page right now, it will error. Display a name of unfind. And we'll fix that in another episode. But for now, just letting you know so you're not unclear on things. That this is going to error out. The next thing to note is we have this handle submit. That's obviously for the submission to update. Then we handle submit password. Go ahead and quickly look at our settings form here. We're just kind of displaying our sign in again so you can see it again. So we have just a little bit of information for edit settings. I'll make this prettier later. This is just a quick, quick job to center it. And when we go ahead and submit the form, we have a handle submit here. Um, a lot of this should look very common to you by now from sign in and sign up. Uh, we have the display name with bound to the value for the display name. We have the username just bound to the name for the username. So put those input classes here, make it kind of look a little pretty. And then again, that same submit button. And then on a separate form down here, we're going to have the user's email as a hidden type and a submit button that says get password change link. And I could have built in a separate form or just a form for them to change as they log in here. I want to send the email and then they have to click the email to go ahead and get to a form where they can actually change it there. So let's go ahead and look at both these submit handlers. Look at the password one first because it's pretty quick. So built into device and rails is an endpoint called user's password. We're given an email, it sends a password link. And that password link, uh, as I already sh uh, shown, it's not gonna work in this uh, particular episode, but uh, it already has this built in and we'll go ahead and clean this up in the, in the rails episode, but we'll go make it click and it says a user's password edit is where this will land on the URL. So we'll build out a user's passwords edit link where they can change their link. And otherwise, it just throws an error if something is going wrong with the endpoint or if they're trying to um, override and change the email or something and then send somebody, else, somebody else's email. It's not a big deal. Next up, we have the handle submit for the main information. We're going to start submitting the true, so the button is disabled, clear our errors out, go ahead and put a put message to the Rails endpoint that we just built. Given the store value, which is here's our store of the user and that person's ID, we'll be passing in an object with the user and username, and then the display name as the display name. Both of these are bound to what is in the form. Now Rails expects a, a snake case, so that's why we're ch uh, changing that from camel case here. It's generally it's pretty standard to use camel case in JavaScript though, so we kind of have to go back and forth, which is not a huge deal. And then of course, because this expects a authenticated user for this endpoint, we need to send over our JWT as well as our AUD. That way we know it's valid. When we get a response back, we're gonna go ahead and override within our store value, the user object to the JSON user object that is returned from Rails, and then go ahead and set this, which will store that on the local storage that we've previously submitted. If there's any kind of issues here, we're gonna use the sapper go to, go to the homepage. Uh, I could just get rid of that for now until we fix sapper things and just throw an error out. Um, but just went ahead and threw that in for now. Um, I'm sure that Svelte Kit has its own uh, go-to equivalent. I just haven't looked yet. So I figured I'd throw that in there, and then when we convert this, it won't be that big of a deal. So that's it for this episode. A little quirks, some things that we need to work out. 
continue to clean up. Um, that being said, this is a nice little simple form. It's going to be uh, a basis for a lot of different forms that you're going to be doing for logged in authenticated users. And let's continue to build out this application. Um, if you can go ahead and subscribe and like, that'd be awesome. And I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks.